All right, work, uh, worksheet 26 and 27 today, we're going to be doing 26A and B and 267A. Your assignment will be worksheet 28A and B and 29A. All right, we're going to graph uh, some changes to our sine and cosine waves today. We have already looked at the B and the A factor, A being the amplitude, B being the number that changes the period of the function. Now we have a new one, K, okay? and we're actually going to add on a C in there somewhere too today, which will be our phase shift. But right now we're just going to do a center line change. So K represents a vertical shift of the whole graph. This means there's a change in the center line, okay, where normally it's been, say, uh, Y equals sine X, the center line has been 0, 0. I mean, it starts at zero. The center line is the line y equals zero. That's the center line. And it went, you know, up, down, up. Okay. And you had a max of one and a min of negative one. That was your basic sine wave. So now what we're going to do is this is going to shift. The graph's just going to shift up or down. So if k is positive, the whole graph shifts up k units. So basically, we're going to be doing stuff like this instead, or it might go down, okay? A is an amplitude change. The height of the graph has changed if A is not 1. If A is negative, this is important, and the graph is reflected about the x-axis. And we already discovered B is the change in the period. You take the old period divided by um, the B value to get the new period of the new graph. If we're going to be doing sine and cosine, what's the period? Okay, period is normally 2 pi. So if we have a change, it'll be 2 pi divided by b if you're doing sine or cosine. Now, considering secant and cosecant are reciprocal functions of those, they would also, if you were graphing one with a b value, that would also be 2 pi divided by b. The ones that are different are tangent and cotangent. They have a shorter period. It's half that. So if you were doing a tangent or cotangent graph, the new period would be pi divided by b. Okay. But these are the ones we're going to be working with. You may you will graph uh, some others in pre-calc. I don't know what that little thing is doing there, but I'm getting rid of it. All right. So here's the deal. Our first graph, y equals 3 plus 3 sine 2 thirds x. We've got a k value of 3, an a value of 3, and a b value of 2 thirds. You want to list your center line. Your center line is going to be a y equals line. And since this has a k of 3, it would be y equals 3. The amplitude a is 3. And if it were negative, it would still be 3 because the amplitude is always positive. The period, <clears throat> this is the B value, 2 thirds. So you take the old period of the sine, which is 2 pi, and divide it by 2 thirds. 2 pi divided by 2 thirds, you change divide by 2 thirds to multiply by the reciprocal or reciprocal. And you can see that that would be 6 pi divided by 2 or 3 pi. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to graph one period. We're going to label three key values on the y-axis and the five key values on the x-axis. Let's think about how this has shifted. The center line has gone up to three. Now, I did not give you a whole lot of room um, to be shifting, say, if I had made this be zero, and I had to go up three to the new center line, and I had to go three higher than that because of the amplitude, I don't really have a lot of room to write six on here, do I? So I'm going to let us, and I'm not going to do this every time, so please be aware of that. Um, I'm going to let us write three right here because that's our center line. But you're not going to label your x-axis there because it's not the x-axis. But this will work better so I can fit it on this graph if I say, well, the amplitude's three, which means I'm going to have to go from three up one, two, three, up two. 6, and I'm going to have to go down 1, 2, 3, which would be 0. Oh, 
I just found the x-axis. Now, if you like to use a ruler because um, you like to make your graphs quite neat, feel free to grab one um, because things are, are a little bit off now. They're moved. So what I mean by that is I'm putting in this because I have a nice tool that makes me make it really straight. Okay, um, and keep from making a mess. All right, this is my x-axis, and our period is three pi. So since I'm just doing one cycle, I'm going to go, you know, for fair ways out. Oopsie, and label my three pi. All right, then I'm going to cut three pi in half, which would be three pi over two. I don't know why I make such big hash marks here? They don't need to be that ginormous, but whatever. I'll stick with it. All right, half of 3 pi over 2. What would that be? What's Did something need something? Or did I do something wrong? Oh, 3 pi over 2. Half 3 pi, 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 4, yeah. Half of a half is a fourth. I don't like how my, I'm writing things. Let me get neater. 3 pi over 4. And then, then now look at our x scale, meaning the scale increments on our x-axis are 3 pi over 4. So each spacing is 3 pi over 4 units. So 3 pi over 4 plus 3 pi over 4, think about this, is 6 pi over 4, which reduces to 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4. 6 plus 3 pi would be 9 pi over 4. Okay, now, do you need me to re-explain that? The increments again? 3 pi over 4. I've determined that by taking my period, cutting the period in half. Then I cut that in half, and that could be my x scale. I incremented by 3 pi over 4 units. 3 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, 9 pi over 4, another 3 would be 12 pi over 4, which reduces to 3 pi. Okay? All right, now let's graph it. So we had a sine graph, <clears throat> which starts at 0, 0 normally, but that's been shifted up 3. So it starts here at 0, um, zero 3. Now I'm going to plot my points first to make my curve before I label all my key values. So you go then up, come back to the center line, down to your min, and then back to your center line. Then you make curves, not Vs. Oh, mine is not perfect, but geez, I'll fix it. <laughs> Good enough. Now, label your key points. 3 pi over 4, 6 is the second key point. 3 pi over 2, 3 is the third. <clears throat> 9 pi over 4, 0 is the fourth. And the last is 3 pi, 3. Anybody still need this? I can wait. How are we doing with our curves? <laughs> About as good as it's going to be. Oh my goodness. I just, well, just sometimes, you know, I'm just hoping that I don't see things like, you know, you know, it's all over the place and not staying in there, you know, or coming down like that, you know, I'd be a little bit off. Okay, I don't know what that is. A worm. All right, number two. This, we have a K value of one, which makes my center line Y equals one. We have an A value of two, which makes my amplitude two. We have a B value of pi, 
which makes my period 2 pi divided by pi, which is 2. So, pi canceled. Okay. All right. Amplitudes 2. All right. I'm going to let us stick the center line as 1 here again. So, we're going to have to find our <laughs> x axis for our labels. From here, we're going to go up 1, 2. That'd be 2, 3 is the max. If you want to label all those, you can. Palm down about the same spacing. So I'm coming down to zero, the negative 1. So my actual x-axis, and lucky me, I get to use my little nice straight line. All right, my period is two, so I'm going to start labeling. Two, half of that, one, one half. Our x scale for this one is one half. One half, two halves, in between one and two, three halves. Uh oh, I keep making my tick mark so big. I always I got to remind people that they have to have them, because I will have people just write numbers down here you need to have a, a guide line little tick mark it doesn't have to be as monstrous as mine but all right i've seen them omitted and then i go what's going on cosine starts normally at one and then comes down and then up back to the center line and then up high but this one's going to start not at one but three Okay, remember your center line is 1, all right? That, we're going to hit it now. And then come down to your min, which is actually, exact, actually negative 1. And then come back to your center line and then go back up to your max. No Vs, curves. Right, right, before you do the curve. I made a little bit of a mess while I'm waiting. I'm trying to clean it up. All right. Don't forget to label your five points. Zero, three is our first key point. Pi over two, one is our second. Our third is at, what I do? Oh, one half. Hello. I just got a pie in there that wasn't there. You must be hungry. Silly. All right, one half one, and then here this is at one negative one, our third one, and then three halves one, and our last one's two three. <clears throat> okay, one more of these. K is negative two, amplitude's two. B is pi over 2. The center line, or the A value is 2. The center line is Y equals negative 2. The amplitude is 2. And the period is 2 pi divided by pi over 2. Well, that results in 2 pi times 2 over pi. Ooh, 4. All right, let's get labeling. Um, guys, I don't know how I'm going to put that center line negative 2 here and then try to show, uh, wait, I guess I, if I would bring that up to here, that'll, we could do it. This is 26, right? Yeah. And we're on the back of 26 on 26B. All right, I'll go ahead and do it again. I'll put negative 2. I'm warning you, though. I'm on the next page. I'm going to change it up a little bit. Okay, so I'm coming up to negative 1 and then 0. Oh, there's my x-axis. 
down negative three, down again. Wait, amplitude is two, so I've got to get down to negative four. All right, there's my x-axis. I'm using green. All right, periods four. Half of that would be two, half of that, one. Oh, look at that. The x scale is one. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, sine wave starts at its center line, which is negative two. Then it comes up. Back, down. My last dot was wrong. Sine wave curves. And label the points. So zero, negative two, one, zero, two, negative two. 3, negative 4, and 4, negative 2. <laughs> Anybody still need this? No? Okay, so what does K represent? It represents a vertical shift. Welcome back, Anthony. C represents the shift left or right called a phase shift. What? Now we're adding in something else. C. Okay. You see your K, your A, your B, and your C? Now you got another thing to look at. The C value. It shifts it. If C is positive, the whole graph shifts to the left. C units. If it's negative, it shifts to the right. It's by X. So it's just like our H, remember? And our parabolas and everything else. It's important to think about the period because if the graph shifts to the left or the right, the place it finishes in one period is also shifted. All right, decide what the period and phase shift are for the following. Don't forget left or right. We are only looking at the B value and the C value. The period is one half, no wait, two pi divided by a half, which is four. The phase shift is pi units to the, pi to the right, or right pi units. Oh, I forgot the pi. Thank you, absolutely. Thanks, Colin, stopping me or whoever just recognized that. It must be because I didn't have much room to write it. No, I'm kidding. I omitted it on accident. All right, the next one has 2 in the B value. So the period would be 2 pi divided by 2, which is pi. The phase shift is left pi over 2. Okay. The next one has a B value of pi. So the period is actually going to be 2, and the phase shift will be right 5 units. It's waning. Peter <laughs> Pecker. There weren't any games scheduled today, I don't think. All right, period. Uh oh. What is it going to be? 2 pi divided by pi over 3. That's 2 pi times 3 over pi. Get practice on that. You recognize it at 6. And the phase shift is left 1. Now we got to do some graphs with that stuff happening. All right, here we go. Our first phase shift graph. 
The K value. There is no K value. So what is it? It's not there. Okay. So it's not a coefficient. So it's zero. The A value is negative two. Uh-oh. That negative says that we need to reflect. And the B value is one. All right, so our amplitude though, what do we write now when we write the actual amplitude? Two. Okay, the period is still two pi because two pi divided by one is two pi. And the phase shift is to the right. That's our C value if you wanted a blank for C. It is right pi over two. All right, so you want to try to plan a moment. If you think about it, your period is two pi. You got to shift to the right pi over two. So this is going to be a nice shift because half of pi two pi is pi and half of that's pi over two. We're going to have some nice, a nice scale to, to um, graph it by. But first, I'm going to graph it as if it hasn't been phase shift, and then I'm going to slide it over. Okay, so I'm going to show the phase shift. So you don't have to do that when you're asked to graph something, um, like on a quiz or something. You can go straight to the answer if you're able. This is just a visual, right? So I'm going to make sure I graph one period called, I'm going to call it the ghost graph, and then I'm going to slide it over. So I'm going to give myself some room to go to the right. So I'm going to put two pi you know, here, around here somewhere. I'm going to cut that in half, which would be pi. Now, half of pi, zero to, between zero and pi would be pi over two. And then one pi of x scale is going to be pi over two units. <clears throat> one pi over two, two pi over two, half of that, three pi over two. Oh no, I just put it right on my line here, which means this has to be zero. I put it on, I made that my x-axis. All right, now I told you I was going to change it. So now we're going to go, what's the amplitude? Two. So I've got to go two up. Wait, what's my center line? Oh, it is zero. So I'm lucked out. Up two. You don't have to have the one labeled, but I just do it. Okay. So let's graph it as if there were no phase shift. It's reflected. Can't forget that. That negative two tells me I got to flip it over. So the actual cosine graph normally starts up at one. It's been amplified to two, but it's also been reflected. So it's actually going to start down here. And now, again, I'm dashing. I'm just making some dots or my little points before I shift it. This is my ghost. Kind of looks like one. <laughs> All right, let me get rid of those. Well, it shouldn't be there. All right, here we go. Let's do the real graph. Now, we had to shift pi over two units to the right. So one pi over two, two pi over two, three pi over two, four pi over two. We got to come out to five pi over two. And I tried to space that away about the same as in there. It's just, you know, I know everybody's not perfect. But this point right here is going to slide to here. They're all sliding over one. All right, let's label the points. The first one where I wrote the word ghost is in the way. We've got pi over 2, negative 2. Pi 0 is the second. 
3 pi over 2, 2, number 3, key point. Third one's 2 pi, 0. And last, 5 pi over 2, negative 2. Then we still need this. I can wait. If you don't, I'm ready to do another one with you. <clears throat> All right, let's do another. Okay, what have I got? Okay, oh, there's a K. It's a one. I don't know why there's no space here for my center line then. I'm going to make one. Center line would then be y equals 1. I have an a value of 1, so my amplitude is 1. Oh, there's nothing in front of this parentheses, which means b is 1. So the period's going to be 2 pi. <clears throat> Excuse me. Vertical shift is up. 1, and the phase shift is right pi over 4. That's not sounding quite the same as the last one. we got to go to the right, so again, I'm going to make my first, my first cycle, or the basic cycle here, and that's 2 pi. Oh, I just deck zero here. Pi. And we'll talk about the center line labels in just a moment. 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. But wait, we have to shift it right pi over 4. And that's not any of these labels. All right. We'll get them on there. All right, let's find our center line. It's at 1. Oops. And the amplitude is also 1. So I'm only going to go up to 2. I'm going to put in my center line now. Now, that can just be dashed. I just have a nice solid line that makes for me. I guess I could have put a dashed one in there. Just so long as I see all your key points. Now, if we did not the shift, this would start at right here, the center line, and go up and back down. This is before the shift. And now I got to figure out the shift. Purple. I need to go right pi over 4. Where would that be between 0 and 2 pi? Bless you. Yes, it would. So we got to go halfway between, so that's going to slide to there. This point up here is going to slide between pi over 2 and pi. This point right here is going to slide between pi and 3 pi over 2. This one's going to slide in between here. And the last one's going to slide over about that much. I tried to space them evenly. I think I missed this one. That went to there. This one, no. That's right. All right. I'll draw it in solid, and then we'll talk about labeling. There we go. 
my original dotted graph is a lot nicer than that one. But okay, let's count. We gotta get our labels so we can name our points. One pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four, four pi over four, every mark, pi over four, four pi over four, five pi over four. 6 pi over 4 reduces to our 3 pi over 2, and the next one 7 pi over 4. 8 pi over 4 is 2 pi, and the last one 9 pi over 4. All right, so now I can label my points. Pi over 4, 1 is my first key point. 3 pi over 4, 2 is my second one. My third one is 5 pi over 4, 1. Yes. Okay. Um... Yep, as long as you have an x-axis and it's labeled with the these. I don't want those on here. You need to show the x-axis. Is that good? Okay. Yeah, I could have done it like I did the, last, the previous one. I started the labeling, so I was like, okay, let's actually see that it shifted above. You know what I mean? It's like a little more visual that it shifted up from the x-axis. If I have all the right points and everything and you have everything that you need, it, it'll be good. Because actually I do have a gr the graphing quiz at the end of the week does have some like this, like this, where I give you this piece and this piece, and it's not necessarily in a graphing graph. Okay, let's graph this one too. We have to get through, let's see, we've got this one. Is this the last? Nope. we got two more to do. Okay, here we go. K, there is no K, so it's zero, which means the center line is actually Y equals zero. Oh, that's nice. No worries on that one about labels, right, Tim? The A value is one. The B value is two. So the vertical shift, there is none. If you want to just write NA, that's fine. The amplitude is 1. The period is 2 pi divided by 2, so that's pi. And the phase sh shift is left, oh no, pi over 2. Okay, what we decided last hour, because I did a not give you a graph that would be very conducive, and they told me that their hole punch was right there. Is that what's happening with you? It's going to be kind of in the way. Yeah. So what we did is we kind of went ahead and moved the vertical axis way over and then did it like that from there. So let's do that. Here's what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is put this in here. Did my center line change? No. All right. So we're just ignoring this chunk right over there. So I'll put zero back here. All right, I have um, an amplitude oh, of 1. So I go up to 1, down to negative 1. The period is pi, and I'm shifting left, so I'll just stick pi out here. Half of that is pi over 2. So the ghost graph would be in this area with the scale, x scale being pi over four. One pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four would be in between pi over two and pi. Okay, if I did not shift it, then I would just graph a cosine wave, one cycle in here. Okay, now I have to shift this left pi over 2. So I need to come back over this direction. 
pi over 2, and that would be negative. Half of that, negative pi over 4. All right, and just slide everything over. If you notice, you're sliding two marks. So this point comes way over here. So I went two slashes or hash marks to the left to do that for every one. One, two. This point, one, two. This point, one, two. And the last point, one mark, two marks. And draw it. Yes, Sam. In a quiz, unless it states otherwise, you will draw one cycle. If it says go out, extend it um, to a certain place, that will have to say that. Otherwise, just graph one. So I got negative pi over 2, 1 for my first point. Negative pi over 4, 0 for the second one. 0, negative 1 for the third Pi over 4, 0 for the fourth. And last, pi over 2, 1. What? One more example. What's that going on? What's that? Just freaking out about the weather? <laughs> yeah, is that what? Oh, okay. All right, amplitude. I got one more to do, guys. I'm tired too. Amplitude is one. The B, B value is pi, which means the period is going to be 2 pi divided by pi, which is 2. There is a vertical shift up 3. And there's a phase shift of right one. Okay, I am going to let us put the center line right on this line. You've got lots of room below there to extend things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. I meant to say that. I said something last hour. Yes, the K value come at the beginning or the end. If it's added on somewhere at the end, that's okay. It's still okay. If it's up in the front, it's okay. Good, good question. All right, so I'm going to put my center line of three right here. The amplitude is only one, right? So I'm going to put four here. And then I come down a ways negative, that'd be positive two. So to get my x axis on here, I gotta come down one and zero. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. All right, so I'm going to label it down here. This is the period of two. Are we going to the right one? Yeah, so I better not go too far out. One, two, we're going to come out to three. This is a sine graph. So it's going to start at its center line. Then come up, then come back to its center line. Oh, I'm missing something. I'm being distracted. I need some more marks down here, don't I? I got to do one cycle from zero to two. So I need to cut one and a half and get that as one half. Between here, three halves. Between here. Five halves, right? Three halves, four halves, five halves. All right, this graph actually goes like that before it's shifted.
Okay, and your assignment is worksheet 28A, B, and 29A. All right, the actual graph is shifted to the right one. So this point actually comes to here. This point, two marks over. This point, two marks over. Okay, so this is one, three, three halves, four, two, three, five halves, two, and three, three. Happy graphing.